All right, as a tight end position, the one position that we are not talking nearly enough about going into the season, Locked On Gamecock starts right now. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, guys? Welcome into Locked On Gamecocks. It is great to have you along. I'm your host, Chris Marler. With a new hat, which we will get to shortly after we uh, make our opening announcements and introductions. I hope everyone's having a fantastic weekend. It is Sunday, the 17th or 18th. It's one of the two. But thank you for making Locked On Gamecocks your first listen each and every day. Shout out to our everydayers. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, as well as on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, today's episode is brought to you by our good friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Listen, I love Game Time. I love FanDuel. I love all of our sponsors. I hope we get a hat sponsor. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Atlanta Braves. This is an Atlanta Braves hat that I'm wearing because so many of you have come from my throat in the comments on YouTube because of the orange hat I was wearing yesterday. In quotes, I don't own a thing that's orange in the world. And and and, and Joseph, even though we are we are not in person, he could probably attest to this because <laughs> one, orange doesn't look good on me or my body type. Orange um, doesn't look good on anybody. It doesn't look good on anybody. But <laughs> I with the with the bad lighting and the and the very light red hat. What's funny is this hat was the same one I wore like two days prior and it still caught a lot of heat anyway it's enough hat talk we're going to start talking about some gamecock football we are joined by a very special guest today it is our our friend joseph griffin from phil sin from gamecocks digest there you go <laughs> yeah i mean i appreciate you joining us so listen you i i've followed you on twitter for a long time um and and i totally uh I, you brought up a point yesterday that i thought was so good and i texted you or dm'd you right away because it's something that, like, even doing this for the last like, month and a half and, and getting into the season, it's really a position I feel like I know I haven't talked nearly enough about and, and another position that I feel like a lot of people haven't talked enough about. That's the tight end position. So we're going to get to that and talk about how it could be a strength, talk about the potential for using 12 personnel, which is something I think that, uh, you know, is a very interesting potential feature in this Dow Loggins offense. But first and foremost, you you were at, at the press conference yesterday. You were around the program very closely. Um what has been your takeaway so far in fall camp? One of the things that I, I've heard that I've kind of been more interested in was the offensive line, who was plagued by injuries last season. Um, yeah. And that's just not the case so far this year. Out of Anderson, who's been touch and go here, and they're hoping to participate here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. But more so, Beamer's exact words, that they feel like they're eight deep, that they can rotate with eight guys, which – has to be a blessing in the yeah. sky compared to what it was last year when you didn't know who was going to start every single game. That was one of them. And two, the receivers getting better with their drops. They were not very happy with week one drops. While there were still some this past that you kind of don't want, they did a much better job overall as a group. Yeah. That part is, I think, is going to be really interesting because as we get closer and closer, it does kind of feel like this idea that Nick Harbor might be the breakout player in the SEC. It, it feels like it's starting to become a little bit more of a pipe dream. Like he's clearly going to contribute and be on the field. And, and I think when he has the ball in his hands, he is going to be very, very successful and, and, and be an absolute weapon. But it does feel like it's just from everything you hear, like it, it's, it hasn't really gelled as much as you want it to as early on. Just because that's what happens. You miss an entire spring. So um, I love the fact that you brought the offensive line. The offensive line is something that I, I think in one of my very first few episodes, I kept saying, I was like, there's two position units that I think were like kind of like a detriment to your success a year ago and really could fuel success this season. Mm -hmm. And it was the defensive backs and the offensive line. And yep. you brought up the fact that you had eight potential players in the offensive line to put that in perspective for our listeners. I, I remember one of the things I heard most about Steve Sarkeesian, the uphill battle he had at Texas, right? I don't know if you remember this, but when he got to Texas, they had eight scholarship offensive linemen. They had 18 receivers, and he was like, what the hell is this roster? Like, how do I deal with this? I, I think it'll be interesting to see if, if you can stay healthy and you're not battling, like, one guy being out almost every single game, they should be good. But when you bring up the receivers as well, like, what are some of the names that seem to be having more consistent mentions, at least, or consistent um, productivity so far in the, in the two scrimmages? 
I've heard a lot of good things about Mazio Bennett, the freshman coming out of here, South Carolina. Um, I feel like Russell is still a name that yeah. is still trying to figure some things out. Um, more from my understanding, still more so in his head than it is anything else. He has yeah. all the capabilities of being a really good receiver. He's just got to get out of his way first. But the transfer, um, uh, I think it's uh, Gage is another name that yeah. I think as well. Um, more of a, I don't want to say gadget guy because a lot of people don't like that term, but can be used in a whole bunch of different ways. He's a speedster um, really too, like yeah. Speedster. Yeah. And especially with this offense that I, I believe Dow Loggins is going to run, which some people may or may not agree with me here. I think it's going to look completely different than what you saw last year. They're going to have some – same tendencies because I mean that's what sellers grew up with right this freshman year. But with two different style quarterbacks, Dow Logan in this offense is going to be a little bit different. So maybe a gadget type receiver doesn't hurt you as much Wait, as it, it did last year. But the thing is too like I I love the one of the things I love about Gage. One, I love the fact that you also did not attempt to say his last name because it is one of my biggest fears outside of the hats that I wear on the show. Me absolutely butchering the last names of people on here. It has been quite an adventure on my own, um, on my own blame here or my own uh, failures. But no, I think I think thing with when you talk about the receiving core, I brought this up a decent amount. You've only got one guy that's over six two. Eight of the twelve receivers you had coming off the roster in the spring are under mm-hmm. six feet. So you're going to need some guys that are kind of gadget guys and, and, and be able to get yeah. open because you don't have a physical body that can go out there at the X or the Z and just be like, if he is he just going to run a go route? Like just you know what I mean? Like is it just going to be? Like snap it and go, and and just and th- throw it up, and him go up and have a 50-50 ball that he can come down with, or are you gonna be able to really utilize like the route tree and 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 have the the play calling that you hope expect expertise mm-hmm. under Dow sure. Loggins? I think they can. Um, you know, rounding out before we get the tight end stuff in the next segment, the running back position I think is, I just think it's it, it, first off, anytime you have a running back by committee approach. It's we've seen time and time again in this league by the best teams in this league that that is a the like the best way to go about getting the most productivity and potential like like production out of that position. I, dude, I was thinking about this the other day, 2015 Tennessee, when you had Jalen Hurd and you had Alvin Kamara. Yep. Horribly underperforming team, thanks to Jeremy Pruitt. But like that's a good one. Obviously, all the ones at Bam, all the ones at Georgia. You see yep. this time and time again where it's not just one lead guy. Um, and even times like if you look at South Carolina, like when Kevin Harris is there and he was just the only guy, you didn't have a ton of other production elsewhere. And you kind of wonder if they left me on the bone of what they were capable of, of doing. Sure. Their potential wise. What what is that running back room look like right now, especially with Rocket Sanders and Attaway and all the new faces? And and the kind of leads up to and I'll be very brief about Attaway because one of my breakout players, just because I. I think that's another name that's kind of gone under the radar was a pretty big pickup because obviously with Rocket Sanders, yeah. you are safe to assume that's your guy. But I don't think people understand that there's not going to be that much of a drop off when Attaway comes in and Rocket needs a break. If you watch his film, him and Rocket are very similar where their they're heads hat down, they're going to run you over. Right. Um, and they're they're both very physical backs. And I think Along with that, and the name is escaping my mind with the transfer from South Carolina State, so forgive me on that one. But that has to feel, or you as a fan, have to feel so much better after last season where you had, again, just injury plagued everywhere, not just on the offensive line, but in the running back room the past two years. And now you kind of have a plethora of backs that you can kind of just pick and choose. Not only Braswell, who is coming off of his freshman year, Juju, you just have a lot of yeah. experience in this room, and it has to make you feel pretty tag on good. Are we are we just not talking enough about Juju McDowell? Or am I crazy? I, I, I think he's kind of, again, one of those names that kind of fall back because you you have an Oscar Attaway, you have a, um, a, a Rocket Sanders, and not that Juju cannot get those carries. I guess it's just a lot of people have just assumed – he won't be used as right. much, but I I think you you just have he's too gifted with the ball in his hands to not have the ball. I would just prefer it not be H back H back dives. Um, I'd prefer yeah. get yeah. that time. <laughs> but he's very good with his hands, and like Beamer said in the press conference, could possibly be in the running for the depth chart with kick return, punt return as well. Right. So just having him on the field is a must for me. It just it feels like it's it's it would be such a missed opportunity to not have that guy get out there and get reps. 
Um, and you talk about Jordan Howell too, the kid from SC State. Like that, I mean, that's listen. I whatever whatever level you want to talk about of, of playing, the kid was an All American mm -hmm. at where he, you know, at, at, at SC State. So, you know, th that's just like nothing to sneeze at. And, and I think here's the other thing too is I think when some outside fans are the worst about this, it's like, oh yeah, who cares? You get somebody from South Carolina State, and especially when you got a guy like Rocket Sanders, and especially when you got a guy like the the production that Attaway had. Um, I, I fully understand the excitement out of those guys. But you got an all American, and I don't think if especially if you're taking those other two guys, that if Beamer would not have probably taken this scholarship on if it wasn't a dude that could play. Yeah. So um, all right, listen, that is all for our first segment here, guys. We appreciate you sticking around. We're gonna talk to you a little bit uh, again about our good friends at the game time app before we get into our next segment. In the next segment, we're gonna talk about 12 personnel, X's and O's, and the tight end position. Specifically, which I think, um, as Joseph has pointed out before, it could be a very, very underutilized position unit that we have not talked nearly enough. But like I said, let's talk about our good friends at the Game Time app first and foremost. Uh, and I am not at all delaying trying to find this. Uh, there it is. Now it's on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Game Time app. I've talked to you guys about this before. Game Time app is a phenomenal, phenomenal tool when you are buying tickets. They are unlike almost any other ticket buying um platform that, that i've seen listen you can have last minute deals up to 60 percent off buying on last minute sports concerts comedy theater etc uh you get a flash deals where you can save even more with in exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of a game or event zone deals i keep bringing this one up man because it just seems like the best possible solution to some of these september and october games where it's a thousand degrees in willie b and you can find deals on specific seats uh, in a specific section ahead of time, if you let Game Time's Game Time app choose uh, the seats for you, also has all-in pricing where you can go on, figure out right up front, no hidden fees, nothing to be added on late or anything like that. Nothing like my DoorDash uh, payment that I had to make earlier today, which was unbelievable. But you have all-in pricing and seat views, everything you can imagine that you would need from a ticketing platform. Get into Game Time app today. Create an account. Use the promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. That's Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download that today, and we will be right back, guys. Make sure you stick around for the next segment. All right, we are back with our good friend Joseph Griffin. From Gamecock Digest, and we are talking about something that ha you have brought up um, on social media a lot, and, and it is the 12 personnel. Now, before we do, I have to give one more shout out uh, to our good friends um, and coworkers here at Locked On. Thank you again for making Locked On Gamecocks your first listen every day. For your second listen, make sure you're enjoying Locked On College Football Podcast. Spencer McLaughlin, the host, does a phenomenal job to get you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron. With discussion on the upcoming season, the ever-changing landscape of college athletics, including conference realignment, the transfer portal, NIL, mispronouncing last names, which I do great on this show, um, new college football extended playoffs, and more. He wears great hats, and he does a great job. Locked on College is available on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. We can keep the lights on. We've done our, uh, our ad pitches and all that good stuff. Talking about the tight ends, man. I know you're really excited about it. You talked to Beamer about it yesterday at the press conference. It is something that no one is talking nearly enough about, and, and I will just give you the floor. What do you think this room and the talent in that room is capable of doing in this season? Absolutely. Uh, and it was something that really just dawned on me earlier this week, um, and as a, several people saw, I put out a tweet essentially about Josh Simon and what he could be. And then kind of got to thinking with the – the pickup of um, Brady Hunt, I believe he came from Ball State. And then Michael Smith, a, a four-star tight end who is about as gifted as can be. Didn't realize just at the time, I guess, how good this tight end group could be. Right. Where, And again, a lot of people, it's just been an underrated aspect of this offense that I think everyone's been worried about the injuries on offense, the receivers, how they're coming, and, and fair enough. Right. But this tight end group very well could relieve some of that stress off of the receivers because you have just as talented guys that can catch the ball and make plays after that. Um, with, with Josh Simon, I, I don't want to use the word underutilized because again, I think there was a lot that went on with Dow Loggins in the play calling from injuries, from everything, mm -hmm. which is trying to figure out something that would work. 
But there were a couple games, more so with the Vanderbilt and the Florida game, where you just saw what he's capable of. And that's just getting the ball at the line of scrimmage yeah. and running 20, 30 yards down the field. That alone with the experience of Brady Hunt, who I am kind of interested to see what he can be. He missed all of last season. I don't remember if it was a foot, ankle, or what it was with Ball State, but had, I think it was nearly 500 yards, five touchdowns or something, yeah. which led tight end. I say led was top like 30, top 35 in college two years ago with tight yeah. ends with Steven touchdowns. So you have experience at that tight end group. Not only that, they're not just capable of being an extension of the run game and getting out there and blocking, but can make plays. And one of the things that was brought up was what freshman, true freshman, does Beamer see being able to make plays? Yeah. And, Typical coach beat. You never really, you didn't get necessarily a name, but he did say just about every single possession when they travel, because you can only bring like 75 players right. on, on the travel SEC, there was going to be a freshman in almost every single one of those spots. But one of the names he brought up was Michael Smith, who yeah. heard a lot about him. He's just a big body dude. But again, not one of those big body dudes that you throw at the end of the line of scrimmage and attach to the yeah. line and let's go run. Again, another Josh Simon, in my opinion. So uh, one of those questions I asked Beamer was about 12 personnel. I mean, again, do you feel confident enough to throw out Harbor and Jared Brown or Harbor and Mazio? Or do you have a – or do you feel comfortable throwing out three receivers at a time? If not, yeah. we can line up in 12 personnel, put Rocket back there, and then you've got Simon and Michael or Simon and Brady. Um, even um, Mo Maurice Brown, again, mm -hmm. another walk on, but a big body dude that I think with the ball in his hands can make plays. It's just something that very well could be a contributing factor to a lot of games this season that I don't think fans are paying much attention to. And, and like, listen, there's so many question, not question marks. There's just so much potential for new faces and new production and new household names that you're going to see this year, as opposed to last year, just because of the, the guys you lost, like, I mean, you don't have Juice Wells pretend to be injured for most of the season. Sorry, Juice. You don't have Xavier Leggett going, you know, like, like I mean, Xavier Leggett was the offensive pass yeah. catching offense of last year, right? Like, you know, I know Spencer Rattler threw for, what, 3,000 yards, something like that, mm -hmm. but a, a majority of those targets were to, to Leggett. Mm -hmm. I think there's so much room for a multitude of guys and, and having, like, like, so, like, you're not going to have a Brock Bowers on this team that's going to have a thousand sure. yards receiving, right? You're going to have guys that you're going to piece that kind of production hopefully together. I love the fact that like the, the, like having a freshman mention this much at this position, and not really as much in the second scrimmage, but in the first scrimmage mm -hmm. especially, it was one of the standout players of the day. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you get in the red zone, and and this is the thing, I, I get so excited when I talk about this because I, I just think that in my vision, and maybe it's just a utopian vision for what yeah. could happen in South Carolina this year. But I just think about when you're in a close game and it's in the fourth quarter and you need to lean on somebody and you've got the ability to have Sellers, Robbie Ashford, and Rocket Sanders all like all in the run game. And then you talk about like being able to lean on people, lean on people with like a big bodies, like like not, yep. not just the upside, line, but the tight end. And then you can, you know, pull the ball back on, on a play mm -hmm. action pass and then hit one of those big bodies in the end zone. Yep. I love it, man. I, I just think it's it's it gets me excited to think to think that we put so much. I don't say pressure, but expectation on a very, very young and unproven receiving group when you might have one of the answers to who's going to help them at the tight end position all along. Yep, I agree. And, and, and one of the things, just from a film standpoint, this offense needs as many indicators or as many eyes from that defense to pay attention to as they can Yeah, um, to help sellers, assuming to help sellers out. Um, but again, it's a simple stuff like that to have a Michael Smith, to have a Josh Simon come out and make a safety have to come and defend him. Because right. I don't think most linebackers can. So taking that safety down, well, again, that helps with alleviating some of that stress that the receivers now have. Now you have that Harbor who's got a 99 speed in the college football game. Yeah. <laughs> and you might can go and throw a deep post, yeah. something like that. It's just a lot of different aspects that could really open up this game not only in the run game, but the passing game as well. And I think it's something that I will be paying a whole lot of attention to heading into the season. Yeah. And I, I just, I love the idea too, of the 12 personnel situation, because like, there's just so many things that you can do out of that formation. So and it's, and, and I'll tell you what, in this age, especially when, when you talk about the way that the game of football is played 
and the way that the rules of college football are played, mm -hmm. sure, like it, it is, they tried to make it somewhat as fair and equal to the defense, right? But it is yeah. skewed to offensive, sure. offensive play callers and then being able to take advantage of that. Because if you get into a, a, a personnel that you like and you're in a hurry up offense, that, that defense cannot sub out. And so when you're in 12 personnel specifically, that is a very difficult thing to match up against. And in and, and considering what most defenses are going to be, which I think is some sort of hybrid of like a 4 2 5 or a nickel defense or whatever, mm -hmm. you're going to see that a lot. Like, I mean, again, if you have that many big bodies, like it, you are creating mismatches all over the field. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love it, man. I, I, it excites me. Like I said, I thought it was such a good point. Uh, the last thing I have on this, and, and this, it's, it's a guy that's more of like a, I feel like like the best way to describe it is like a flex position, but like Luke Doty, where like where do you see him being on the field this year? I don't so, want to say it at all, but where do you think? Um, and, and I'm trying to remember the exact words that Shane Beamer used in the press conference with Doty is he's just going to be able to help out right. special teams receiver. Um, it's just one of those players that as a as a fan you kind of have to love. Um, yeah, and this college football day of age and I on everything he's sticking around. I, I more so see him as a special teams guy. Um, and again, with more additions from the receiver room that you kind of feel like you have more potential, at least you might not see him as much. Maybe early on until you have an established three or four where the staff just feels pretty confident, like, here we go, here's our rotation kind of thing. Yeah. But I just don't see much with Luke Doty. I also wouldn't hate put him in some type of 12 personnel as well. Um I don't know how well of a blocker he is. I know he's got the heart of a champion that he'll sure as yeah. hell go try. Um, right. Um, but I wouldn't hate Luke Doty in some way, shape, or form being there as well. And I know this kind of off topic, but yeah. something that came to my mind, I don't think Michael Smith is necessarily limited to the tight end that has to be attached to the line of scrimmage. I, love I that. think Michael Smith can very well be a guy that they send out on an island and say, here you go. Figure it out. Whether they're planning on going to him or not, I think Michael Smith is that good. Yeah. To where at some point I, I would – I don't want to go and say shocked, but I, I might be shocked if you don't see every now and then or at least once in the first two or three games Michael Smith somewhere out there on his own. Well, and I'm sure that like – now listen, I'm not built like all these kids, uh, and 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 I'm and maybe just because I'm old and I don't my 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 joints aren't what they used to be. <laughs> but if you gave me the option at 21 and 20 or, or 18 to 22 years old to put my hand to the dirt or, or or flex out at that position, probably would have chose the flexing out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like so, I, I do, but I do agree with what you're saying too, because I think and here's the thing too is in this same age, and I don't know how much we have have, have seen this out of Dow Loggins, especially going into year two, I expect that we'll see something that's a little bit closer to his full playbook. Not saying that Spencer yeah, Rattler didn't sure, operate absolutely. on that last year, but you know, you're in year one, you're trying to also get through a situation where it's like, now last year you didn't have nearly the same amount of freshmen that went through spring ball. You only yeah. had yet all but three that went through this year. Yep. So I think that you have a deeper understanding of the full playbook of what Dal Logan's going to have in this day and age of football Dude, the window dressing part of the game is such a massive like a component to offensive play calling. Yeah, I, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. And again, it was something that I kind of, kind of briefly stated on Twitter. Something about Shane Beamer's demeanor. And yeah. Again, coaches are very, very good at this. Um, so I know some people might take that, myself included, might have taken that out of context. But very, just blank or just how, how do I want to phrase this? Blatantly just said, we're not where we should be, but we're going to be good enough on offense. Yeah. And again, I kind of feel like that's where I was last year, but and then all the injuries happened. Right. But now, and it seems the concept to me seems weird to say this out loud, but I feel like you're in a better position offensively with the quarterback that you have, even with missing Xavier Leggett. Yeah. To where now, and this is kind of a cheap cop out. I feel like South Carolina has a edge in some way, shape, or form. But well, who on earth are you going to have to come out there and stop? It's right. not like last year where you're like, okay, let's bracket Xavier Leggett and then let Spencer Rattler just get tackled three seconds after the snap. Right. Yeah. Whatever it was. Um, yeah. This year, it's kind of like, okay, sellers can move. You have Rocket Sanders, you have a Josh Simon that can play you have a nick harbor that 
I mean, with the ball in his hands, again, great. How he's come along with route running is still yet to be seen. Um, but there's just so many different variables that are unknown until we see the first snap against Old Dominion. Yeah. Um, and having that and not only being able to install a lot more of the offense this year, but again, a lot of different factors and variables that Dow Loggins can kind of, the third and two doesn't look the same anymore as third and two last year. Third and two, you no. knew it was going to be a run or some sort of, please God, let the offensive hold up so we can yeah. fall forward two yards. Well, it just completely changes everything. And I think too, like, I think in, in a, in, in a positive way, I'm trying to be Beamer here for a second and, and just sure. turn this into whatever positive I can. That guy is just, he's, if, if I hope he is the head coach here for as long as they, they can win. But if he's not, he needs to get a career in PR because he is incredible. He is incredible. Like he just, he is the most positive person when he gets up behind that microphone. I, I love it. But no, he is. one of the things I was going to say was, I think in a positive way, it really helped Spencer Rattler before the draft in terms of that's not a guy that was ever described as a mobile quarterback. No. Right. Like he, he, that's not his forte. He's got an arm. He can make all the throws. He can do all those things between the ears. I think he's a really, really smart dude, especially on the field. Mm -hmm. um, and he matured a hell of a lot uh, oh, yeah. after his first couple of years when he got to Columbia, but running was never going to be Spencer Rattler's forte. And, and I think it probably helped getting on tape, him having to run and make, yeah. uh, make plays in the run. Like he, he had to, cause the offensive line, but I'm with you, man. I, I, I think that one, Sellers is a different body type that's not going to be brought down as easily and, and will also be a little bit more elusive in the run if he has to sure. take the ball and, and, and take off or anything like that. So, um, all right, that is all. We, we primarily focus on offense, and we're probably going to continue that way. But I do want to talk about a couple of breakout players in our very last segment. Um, I appreciate you again, uh, or again, having you on. Um, make sure you stick around, guys. We will be right back with Locked On Gamecocks. All right, good news. I don't have a single ad read. We can just get right into it. Um, all right, so, it, so I asked you this off air, and I want to hear your, your thoughts on it. I, and I don't know if it'll be a tight end specifically in this, but give me a couple of, or or, or maybe just your your main guy uh, as we close up the show, breakout players that that you think will be, I don't say a household name nationally, but like guys that are going to have a big jump from 2023 to this season in 2024. Are we excluding freshmen from this list? You can talk about whatever you want, man. So I, I feel like this is more of a cop out, and I have three names for oh, you. Here we I go. Feel like it's more of a cop out, but Mazio Bennett, I think, is a guy that you're you're just going to see early and often. I agree. Um, he's just too good naturally. Again, I hate using the word gadget player because a lot of fans don't like that. Yeah. But again, can be used anyway. Um, right. I'm just excited to see him one. And again, it's just a, a, he's he's natural route running ability. He's yeah. got good hands, soft hands, and has that playmaking ability. That's one guy that even without seeing how it's going to translate to college, I just kind of feel pretty that's my safe bet. Yeah. The other one that um it's kind of a he will he play question mark, but more so I'm intrigued by it, is Wendell Gregory on okay. the um He's a linebacker. A lot of people may or may not know this. Um, I did a segment way back at the early beginning of the year where we broke down all of the commitments uh, or the committed players film. And this was a guy that played receiver his freshman, sophomore year in high school. That's why. And then went over to play linebacker. And you can see it. And his explosiveness and his change of direction yeah. is absurd. Um, not, I don't think this is a guy that's just limited to being a linebacker. Very well could just come and stand up on the outside can get after the quarterback as well. If he plays, I think it's one of those things where, or at least you, you got to see what you have in him. Um, yeah. Because I, I think it's easy to say Dylan Stewart can come out and, and have a pretty decent year. But Wendell Gregory is one of those. If he can get on the field and show what he's capable of with this speed, I, I think that could be a potential breakout player. But that's one of those, will he see the field? Not sure yet. Yeah. Might, he might see it in special teams role. But another one for me, and it's kind of pick your poison here, and it's not even on offense. Um, it, it might be Bam Martin Scott or yeah. Demetrius Knight. Pick a linebacker. Um, Dude, whichever Demetrius one's Knight, man, line I, up by Debo. I don't need to cut you off. I just get so excited talking about this kid because you talk about like the speed and hitting over 21 miles an hour, like like 
I I think that kid because there's so much space. I, I've hijacked your whole thing. I apologize. No, I just good. so excited talking about that kid because I think he is going to be that. That is an you can't teach speed, man. You can't no. coach speed. You can't teach it. I I think you're spot on with that. Yep, and and, and it's something that you again hate to do this. I'm never one to bash a player, and I'm not. Um, but something that kind of hurt I think this defense at times last year where linebackers weren't as good getting east to west as right. they were north to south. Yeah. And, and if you're going to play primarily a 4-2-5 or, or um, a 3-4, whatever they're going to play, or three down three, front, three, yeah, whatever they decide to do, because they've done a lot from my understanding, um, there's no telling what you're going to see them on defense. They just feel yeah. that confident. Um, but if you don't have guys that can get east to west at that linebacker position, it leaves you very vulnerable. Um mm-hmm with with that and so i think a guy like knight and i think a guy like bam martin scott is somebody that you could very again not just in the aspect of speed getting out east to west i think there are guys that you could see both of them assuming how much that rotation is or what that rotation looks like um if you see both of them in the 335 man that's got to be a scary kind of front six yeah. front seven situation you have speed at the linebacker position, and then you've got brute at the defensive line. It's a front seven that, again, I'm not a, I have not been a fan of South Carolina as long as everyone else might be the best front seven I think they've seen in quite some time here in Columbia. It does feel like I've been saying this on paper and 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 the way you hear about like the confidence they have going into this season, it does feel like it's the best defense they've had since Beamer's been there, and it might be the best sure. defense they've had statistically since 2017. Like sure. like they are going to be a very, very good unit, I think. And I and, and here's the thing I think people don't understand outside of Columbia is that, like, it's so exciting to talk about what we think we know going into a season. Yeah. And, th- and that just doesn't ever fit South Carolina, whether it's like yeah. – like, even last year when you thought, like, you know, there's some people that thought they might finish second in the SEC East and, yeah. and, and you know, all that kind of stuff, RIP to the SEC East. But, like, like it, it always feels like this is a – outside of people that – no, this was Brad Crawford a couple weeks ago. He was like, I feel like I've like been one game off every year of like what they can be or versus what they are. And people that are close to the program that that are, I think they get it. But outside of the outside of Columbia and outside of this zip code and, 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 and area code, it is people love to talk about what they think they know, especially going into a season. And that is just really the case in college football. So yeah. Anyway, man, I really appreciate you coming on. We're gonna we're gonna end this show so we can go watch Spencer Rattler play in the preseason game Absolutely. against uh, against the Niners. But Joseph, thank you so much for joining us. Tell everyone where they can find all your stuff. Um, tell them about where they can find the the videos and uh, the series of, of you talk about with like the recruits, everything like that. And we'll have you on again soon, man. Yeah, sure. Um, I only have a Twitter. It's Joseph Griffin JG, and YouTube couldn't tell you to save my life right now. Um, that I haven't been on that in a minute, but we'll be picking up on that soon. But they can find that over on Twitter as well, or sorry, X. I'm and sorry. um, and for without the listeners or for without people watching the show, he's wearing a gray shirt, no hat. We have a strict dress code on here now, so I appreciate I'm you coming on. We'll uh, we'll do it again soon. Have a good one.